Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mobile, Alabama. It is time for Southern Stampede. These people are fired up, ladies and gentlemen, and they are ready here in Mobile to get this thing rolling. Before we get started and before we head to the ring and before we go down the match card I want to talk about something that is um, 100% true this is outside of call this is real life that just happened this past weekend and I thought it would be fitting to talk about this since we are in Mobile Alabama um, but in in Alabama on Sunday March the 3rd uh, a couple of tornadoes just tore through uh, Lee County um, and just ripped up homes. And at this moment, there are um, at least 23 people that have been killed and so many more have been injured. If you want to be able to help them, help uh, the these people of Alabama, you can give to the American Red Cross of East, of East Alabama. You can give to the Alabama Governor's Emergency Relief Fund, um, or you know you can hit to the Red Cross's website. I'm gonna add these some of these links down below. Um, this all happened on the third, uh, at, at, after I had decided that this was gonna be in Mobile, Alabama. So, uh, f uh, just a quick moment to uh, you know be the step outside of call for a minute, and 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 kind of bring the real life into this and if you guys want to help um, I'm gonna do what I can to give uh, uh, to the um, the uh, American Red Cross of East Alabama they're providing shelter and food and water and everything like that so uh, links are all down in the description below if you can please give if not uh, keep those people in your thoughts and well wishes now with all that said let's get on with the show Well, here we are, folks. Let's run down the match card. We have got six fantastic matches for you this evening. First up, we had one of our longtime members, Ryan Riley, take a step down from the SWF roster, which freed up a roster spot. We are a 30-person show, and we will stay a 30-person show. To do that, we need a 30th person. So, on SWF's Twitter, at SWFederation underscore 2K, a post was put out there. The first eight people who want to be a part of SWF, let us know. Get in contact with us. And those eight people did. We are going to have an eight-man ladder match to see who's going to pull down that contract and become part of the SWF roster. That is Adam Phoenix, Yuri Cato, Brandon Ace, Robert Hall, Crimson, Jay Temple, Franco and Jackson Carr. If I'm being biased, if I'm picking someone to win this, I want to say Jackson Carr, but this is a ladder match, so somebody on the smaller side of things may get the victory, possibly Jay Temple or um, even Crimson. So we will have to see what happens there. Moving along, Brett Storm on every card since uh, a gold rush and the man has been on a full-out tear. He has gone, and while he did lose a match, I want to say between Gold Rush and now, he's had five matches, I believe. He's won four of them, or, or four matches, and he's won three of them. So I, I, I am pretty interested to see how he responds here on Southern Stampede. If he gets the win against former Lone Star champion Alex Corzo, where does that put him on the list towards 
either the Maverick Championship or the Lone Star Championship. Following that match, the first ever Gunslinger Champions will be defending those titles since they won them at, at Deuces Wild against The Birth, Coda Fish, and Keith Alexander. These guys came in. They were here uh, last season. They came in and put up quite the fight. But with Ryan Riley out, Jay Wolf was without a partner. The Birth uh, were put into that position. That Following that tag team matchup, we've got a second tag team matchup. Malcolm Black and Bruiser Brad in the Fallen Kingdom will be taking on Jesse Newman and James Gaines of Sons of Carnage. These, peop these guys have been going at it, mainly Jesse Newman and Malcolm Black, but the Fallen Kingdom and the Sons of Carnage back and forth. I'm interested to see who comes out on top and where this puts them in the Gunslinger Championship rankings. Then, in our co-main event, we have got the Lone Star Championship. Duke Zenda won that title at Gold Rush, his first major title here in SWF. And he is facing off against SDC, who has uh, really just been kind of putting it on him. Um, after Gold Rush, uh, Duke Zenda took a day off, took the night off. Um, and then the next week, SDC gave Brett Loss his first tour, uh excuse me, Brett Storm, his first loss in this uh, week, or, or excuse me, this month-long um, experiment, if you want to call it that, that's been happening here in SWF and Brett Storm. But then later that night, SDC attacked Duke Zenda. The following week, SDC faced off against Duke Zenda and won. He won that matchup. Duke Zenda then, on last week's episode, faced off against Mason Foster, who got himself counted out. And... He did not want to partake in that matchup. Got to keep the goods nice and clean and without injury and healthy. So I'm interested to see if Duke is a, is a one-month champ or if he's going to be able to get the drop and get the win over SDC. Our main event of the evening, Jay Wolf defeated Seb Abbott at Gold Rush to become the Maverick champion. Now this one has been somewhat brutal. It has been a pretty hard-fought title for these guys. And if Seb Abbott wins, he will become the first ever, ever double champion. Assuming he, him and uh, Leo McKay win the tag team match, the Gunslinger Championship, and he wins this match. Seb's got to do double duty, and he's only got a couple matches in between himself, uh, his two matches, to rest up. Oh, by the way, this is an Extreme Rules knockout only match. That is your main event. With all of that said, let's get it going here, folks. First matchup of the night. All these guys are already in the ring. Let's get to it. Here we go, folks. There, geez, Robert Hall just super kicked Yuri right in the face. I'm going to do my very best to try and call this match and call everybody by the right name. This is going to be the longest match on the card, 100% guaranteed, because there are no pins, there are no countouts, there are no submissions. Robert Hall goes over the top rope. You've got to outlast seven other dudes and climb a ladder to get this contract how ridiculous there goes Brandon Ace over looks like Temple's gonna follow him out Crimson and I knew I was gonna forget his name Carr just friggin spine buster Franco right in the center of the ring I've already forgot I, I feel terrible Adam, Adam Phoenix there, there we go Phoenix with a nice move there on Crimson. The only two guys in the ring right now. Well, Temple gets in. Hall elbows to the face of Yuri over there. Brandon Ace flat on his back. Yuri pushed back into the ring. Look at Carr. He is humongous. Taking on Franco. Jeez. And Crimson, he has got Phoenix. Oh, and a release suplex. Drops Phoenix down. He rolls outside the ring. And Crimson goes right after him. Franco and Carr left 
in the ring here. Oh, Franco goes for a super kick, but Carr sidesteps it. Oh, but he catches him with an enziguri, and now Carr rolls outside of the ring. Franco stands alone. Carr right back in. Who's busted open? There's blood on the ground. We've got the sawdust on the floor. I think it might be Jay Temple. No, it might be Adam Phoenix. Look at the moonsault from Franco. This is madness. This is madness. Why has this match been made? It should have been elimination. Look at Ace dropping Temple down and a missile drop kick from Franco. Knee to the face of Yuri by Robert Hall. Franco going up top. Oh, gosh. On the outside, takes out everybody. Crimson, Carr, Ace, all get taken out by Franco. Robert Hall is busted open. We see the blood now running down his face. Temple's going to bring a ladder in. <laughs> Excuse me, this is insanity. Franco with the ladder and blast Hall with it. And oh my God, there's bodies everywhere. Car in now. Oh, he's not gonna let Franco go up that ladder. He's got him in a torture rack position. Oh, jeez. Look at Phoenix kick to the face of Crimson from the top rope to the outside. This is insanity right now. Temple has got Hall up. Oh, and a kick right to the back of the head. Yuri. Kato and Brandon Ace on there. Ace has got him up in a fireman's carry position. Look at him. Look. Face first goes Kato. Hall and Carr, only ones left in the ring. Over the top goes Hall. And here comes Carr. I felt it. I felt it in my bones that he may get this victory as he starts working on that. Here come Temple and Yuri both going after uh, Jackson Carr here. Oh, nice reversal though. Top of the ladder. These two guys are going at it. There goes Yuri Kato, which gives Jackson the option to get that briefcase and that contract again. But Temple, uh oh. Temple. Oh my God. Sintons over there to Crimson. Franco and Ace going at it. Temple's going to send Hall onto the outside. Jay Temple going up now. Franco with a drop kick to Ace. Temple's got a hold of that briefcase. Here comes, here comes Franco. Oh, and a shot. And a second shot. There's bodies everywhere. Phoenix and Crimson going at it on the outside. Temple not letting go of that briefcase. Here comes Robert Hall now. Franco just left the ring. What is he thinking? Hall going up top. And a shot to Temple. Robert Hall's going to steal it. Robert Hall's going to steal it. No, and Yuri Cato comes in and shuts it down. And now Cato and Jackson Carr push the ladder out. And Franco with the power bomb. Hey, Jesus. Cato sends Carr out. Crimson's busted open by Adam Phoenix and a drop toe hold to the outside. Temple into the ladder. Jeez, Louis. Good God Almighty. Out goes uh, Brandon Ace. Hall, Franco. Oh, jeez. Hall just blasted Cato with a pop-up punch to the chin. Look at Adam Phoenix over there with Crimson. Kick to the midsection. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The knee to the face. Temple back in. Car busts open. Brandon Ace at the bottom of the screen. Franco is doing all that he can to get people out of his ring. Over the top goes Crimson, but Phoenix chases after him. Doesn't stay in the ring. Look at Jackson Carr. Oh my God, a jackhammer on the outside. Oh my God, that might have killed him. Big kick to the face of Yuri Kato by Ryan. Not Ryan, excuse me, Jay Temple. Look at Jackson Carr out there. Jeez. Tombstone pile driver. Crimson with a power bomb to Phoenix. Temple is stirring, but Robert Hall is on top of the ladder. Everybody in to stop him. Is he going to get there? Crimson having issues. Everyone gives up. What are you doing? 
Robert Hall wins! By God, Robert Hall wins! What just happened? What just happened? Everybody in the ring, and they just turned their backs. Here is your winner, Robert, Robert Hall has Robert. just won the SWF contract. Well, folks, our second match of the evening. Let me congratulate Robert Hall. Uh, to be honest, Robert Hall has the look. He's got the attitude. He'll be a welcomed addition here to SWF. The, to the other seven men in that matchup, never fear. You will get first dibs when we open up the roster once again. Moving right along, as you can see here, Brett Storm. The story of Brett Storm here in SWF is checkered. His past last season was not doing well at all. He was downright terrible. Something happened in Brett Storm and he changed. And he changed into Morpheus. And when upon doing so, he started winning matches. He started getting on the right track when season one or two ended Brett Storm thought all that gimmicky garbage was not not truly him and he came into SWF Brett Storm once again and again started out on a rough path but given the opportunity Brett Storm was put on every match card since Gold Rush. Brett Storm was part of one of the eight-man battle royals for the Maverick number one contendership where he lost that match. Then he lost to Amari Williams and he got his first victory over Ryan Adams at the Gold Rush pay-per-view and after that he said give me the opportunity let me show you I can do it and Management did just that. The following night, or the following, uh, excuse me, shootout episode, he defeated Elliot Collins. He then did lose to SDC, but then beat Mason Foster, then beat Savage, the Savage John Rom, who had been unbeaten in SWF. There is not a single person who is unbeaten right now in SWF. As Alex Corzo makes his way down to the ring, the Aztec Nightmare. And he is fired up. The headdress on. This man is geared up and ready to go. Get back in the scene here. Brett Storm has come in. And in his last five matches, only lost one. Only lost one. So, I'm interested to see what he does. If he wins here tonight, as I mentioned earlier, and defeats the former champion. Look at it. He's not just nonchalant. He just doesn't care over there. He doesn't care anything about the, the, the theatrics. The elbow he landed on Mason Foster two weeks ago. I, I can't. I don't even have words. And oh my gosh, he looked like to be going for that elbow early. And Foster come, I mean, excuse, jeez. Corzo comes in like a rocket. And he is blasting away. Kick to the midsection, knee to the chest, boots to the hamstring again to Brett Storm. So what happened? Look at this. Look at this. Oh my God, what a backbreaker there. What happens to Brett Storm if Alex Corzo wins? What happens to Alex Corzo? Where does he put him? All of these have major implications. Down goes Storm. Over the top goes Storm. Whoa. Big belly to belly over the head of Brett Storm. He's going to drag Corzo out to the center of the ring. Jeez. And now he's going to target the limbs of Alex Corzo. The former champion. Uh-oh. Quick pin. Just a one count. Just a one count. 
Storm is cranked up, folks. He has been quite vocal about his position here in SWF. Look at this. Has him up. Vertical almost. Jeez, and drops Corzo down. Red Storm has been extremely vocal about proving himself. Uh-oh. He went for a spear. Knocked the ref down. Oh, and a clothesline sends Corzo down to the mat. The ref, though, getting back up to his feet. So management heard him. Said, you want the opportunity? You'll get it. Sending Corzo to the center of the ring. And we saw this quite a few times in the last few weeks. Poof! Big old boot right to the ear hole, right to the upper jaw area. And look at him now working the, the wrist, the arm. Double knees to the back and rolling through it. That is a lot of punishment in a short amount of time right there. Corzo pulled up to his feet now. Storm's going to send him into the corner, and we saw that as well. That shoulder block to the lower back. You know, your that spine runs your body. And if your lower back, you've got a lot of spinal issues happening, you're going to have a hard time even functioning, boys. Again, Storm really, now those couple of kicks to the kidneys, one to the face and those double knees, that's going to put a lot of beating on a dude. And in quick succession, the Corzo slams the shoulder of Storm down and quickly double axe handle. And now going out, he goes, you got, you want to take it out on me? I'm going to take it out on you, dropping the shoulder down again. Really focusing on the shoulder. Where Storm's focusing on the back. Corzo looks to be putting all of his energy into that shoulder. Over the top rope and out into the sawdust. And a nice reversal there from Storm. Oh, misses the right hand. But turns him around and drops him with a clothesline to the back of the head. Oh, wow. Corzo went for a... Was that the elbow? Was that the elbow? Into the corner now is Corzo. Oh, boy. Look at this. Middle of the ring. Storm, big kick. Oh, my God. Up in the air. And drops him down into the midsection across his knee. What a move that was. The coordination alone. Kicking him up in the air and catching him. My goodness. Oh, it looked like Corzo was about to tap out. Big forearm right to the bridge of the nose of Storm and a reversal there Spear! He hit the spear that time He hit the spear that time and doesn't go for the pin That might be the undoing of Storm right now Shot to the back of it Look at this Look at this Oh my gosh, Brett Storm gets out of it That was the Colossus, that was gonna be it Storm has got Corzo up and drops him for a power bomb in the pin. And Corzo kicks out. Corzo kicks out at two. Oh my goodness. Uh oh. Corzo's up. And just as he pops up, Storm hits him with a European uppercut from the second rope. And here comes the elbow. Blasts Corzo across the chin. This might be it. This might be it. One. Two. Oh my goodness. Storm is berating the referee for a slow count and not not waiting at all. Storm coming in. Good God almighty, a second elbow. A second elbow to Alex Corzo. And again, Storm is down for the count. Two. And Corzo kicks out again. Was the ref helping him? He looked like he was giving him high fives down there. Storm up on the top rope. Oh my God, what a body spot. I don't think we've ever seen Storm go up top like that. Holy cow. The, the anger that must be flowing through Storm right now. Alex Corzo is just doing anything he can to stay alive in this matchup. And look at Storm's face. My goodness. Double knees. Double knees to the back. 
And Corzo with a nice arm drag getting out of any situation there. Corzo has got to mount some offense if he wants to keep going in this matchup. And he takes a little too long plotting a move. And Storm hits him. Oh. Went for a big overhand and Corzo catches it. Across the ring now. Oh, they bump into each other. Belly to belly from Corzo. And down for the pin. One. No. Just a one count. Corzo trying to get out of this matchup. I don't blame him. Judo flip there from Storm. And he is, this crowd, my goodness. He's got this crowd eating out of his, the palm of his hands and a shot since Corzo out to the sawdust. And now Storm, he's got Corzo up. Look at this. Where's he going with him? The steel steps, my God. Corzo dodges a, a right hand and a kick to the midsection. Quickly back in the ring, though. Corzo knows you got to win this one in the ring. Look at this. Face first goes Storm. Face first goes Storm, and Corzo's going to roll him over. Is that it? Is Storm out for the count? No. No, and Corzo can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Is this going to be it? No. Storm catches it and shuts it down. Oh, my goodness. And, I mean, at this point, Storm is just bullying Alex Corzo with this. Multiple kicks to the kidneys and to the face and the double knees. My goodness. My goodness. Corzo went to end it all, and Brett Storm stopped it. If Storm hits this elbow, it's over with, and he does. He just blasted Corzo with the third elbow. Down goes the ref. One, two, three. Brett Storm has done it. Three elbows. Oh, my God. Those elbows are some of the hardest-hitting elbows I have ever seen in SWF. And Brett Storm gets the victory here at Southern Stampede. Where does that put him in the grand scheme of things for a championship? Here we go. The first title match of Southern Stampede. And out comes first are the birth. My goodness, these guys. They are ready to do battle for those Gunslinger Championships, but I gotta say, Leo in the sleaze, they're no slouches, that is for sure. Keith Alexander bringing out his tag team partner, Coda Fish. Look at these maniacs. They're psychopaths. The birth ready to get it on with the tag team champions. And I, I just, I need to, I need to know. I need to know what's gonna happen. We're all gonna find out right now. That's for sure. These two men, part of. SWF last season, I believe, or the season before, were able to come back and be a part of it once more. And they came back during Deuces Wild and did fairly decent. Um, was able to get a couple matches in, I believe. Let me double check my notes. Um, but they came in and they came in for that tournament only at the moment to sign uh, contracts here. And now they have got a tag team championship matchup. And there's the sleaze. There's Leo McKay. The gunslinger championship. Leo and the sleaze. 
and they came in to the tournament. Uh, uh, one of one of the things I loved about that tournament was that towards the end, it was teams that were kind of just put together. Now the birth went in and defeated Money Talks, Duke Zenda and Brett Storm, and they they have their own issues after Zenda tapped out. But then Leo and the Sleeves beat the Freaks, uh, Zach Graves and Evelyn Reese. And then in the second round, the Birth and Leo and the Sleeve Sleeves, jeez, faced off against each other. So while they didn't get far in the too far in the tournament, they have their opportunity here tonight at Southern Stampede. And so now they have their opportunity. Let's see what they're gonna do with it. What they're gonna do with it. Keith Alexander, Coda Fish, the birth. And they are fired up. Look at their faces. Look at the determination in their faces. You look at You look at uh at the Australian sleaze Seb Abbott. And you don't, uh, he doesn't strike you as somebody who's got a lot going on. I hate to say that, uh, but yeah. I mean, look at look at him. He's a maniac. He is a freaking maniac. And he's got two matches here tonight. So I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to be able to survive. But we will see. That championship is bigger than Leo, Leo's whole upper body. But the ref has got those championships in hand the gunslinger titles are on the line folks the birth are taking on leo in the sleaze and it looks like coda fish and leo are going to start things off right oh man in the middle of the ring ddt to leo now in singles action leo has not had the greatest go he he actually has the most losses here in SWF and no wins. He is 0-5 in singles competition. Look at the strength of Leo. Bam! Now, Seb Abbott is 2-3. Seb did get the victory over Jay Wolf last week, I believe. Let me double check my notes. Yes, he did. But Jay Wolf beat him the week before. Seb Abbott defeated Lance Romance. Jay Wolf defeated Evelyn Reeves. It went back and forth who won what match. And so, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen in that match tonight, but we're not talking about that match right now. We're talking about the Gunslinger Championship. And, oh man, head first into the top turnbuckle. Leo tossed hard into the corner, and here comes Code of, or excuse me, Keith Alexander. Big shot to the midsection. Oh, Leo's quick. Leo with the quickness and Wise sends him in the corner. Oh, doesn't go for the tag though. Instead hangs up Alexander in the tree of woe. Oh my God, and it delivers a devastating code breaker. And now he is going after the arm and the hand. Not just the elbow or the, the hand, the fingers, my goodness. And in his corner, he is not tagging his tag team partner. I don't, can't say that I uh, agree with that whole situation. He goes for a chop, and Alexander catches both men. And look to be going after Seb. I've got to say, I don't think, if this is the way things are going, Leo and the Sleaze are going to hang on to these championships. They gotta play smart. Kick to the leg there. Oh my gosh. That was pretty smart. Teardrop suplex there from Leo after a shot by Seb Abbott. And Leo, I don't, I don't know what's going on, why he's not bringing Seb Abbott in. I feel like that's gonna be necessary. Maybe Keith Alexander's in the way. Maybe. And Leo waits too long. Into the corner he goes. Coda Fish coming in. These guys are working like a well-oiled machine here. 
Oh my God. Kick to the midsection. After the super kick. Christ. Good God Almighty. Here comes Seb Abbott. Big forearm to the face. And a huge clothesline. Seb Abbott's fired up. European uppercut. My goodness. And quick. Goes down for the pin. Just a one count. Holy cow. These guys are not, oh geez. Seb Abbott, he might win this match for Leo in the sleeves. Nice reversal there from Coda. He's gonna take Seb though towards, look like him towards his corner. Oh man, what a forearm that was. And the snap mare, the flip over snap mare. And here comes Leo. He's back up on his feet. Big clothesline, though, by Coda Fish. Kick to the back. Oh, and a running code breaker. Running code breaker from Fish. Knee right across the elbow of Seb Abbott, who kicks him away. No arm drag. Man, these guys. Here, so, this is the biggest difference between the Birth and Leo and the Sleaze. The Birth have been a tag team forever. Leo and the Sleaze have been a tag team for about two months and a super kick. The Birth might be leaving Southern Stampede with the tag team championships. One, two, no. Seb Abbott kicks out at the last second. Here comes uh, Keith Alexander. They are doing what Leo and the Sleaze are not. They are getting the tags, getting the fresh man in. Oh my gosh. Big right hands though by, by Seb Abbott. Oh! Went for a flying form it looked like. Oh man, and down goes Abbott. He looks to be crawling over and, and is unable to get there. Taking him down though, Seb wisely, wise, gets over there. No, look to be going for the tag, but Alexander not having it. Look at all this. Drops him down hard with a backbreaker or body uh, side walk slam, senton bomb. My goodness. Seb, though, with the back body drops. Got to get out of this match. Can't do it that way. Arm drag. DDT. Both men perfecting that DDT from the knees. Here comes Alexander, though. Look at this. Got Seb up into the air. Down to the knees. He goes right to the base of the neck. That could be it for the Gunslinger champion. And Leo jumps in and breaks it up. But quickly, quickly getting out of the ring. And look at Alexander up top. Uh-oh. Oh no. And a huge, huge shoulder block from the top rope. Seb's doing all that he can to get out of this match. Into the corner hard. Goes Abbott and delivers a big clothesline. Seb, you gotta get out of this match, brother. Oh no! We have seen that before. And, oh man. We have seen that low blow before and he goes for the huge clothesline and Alexander ducks it. And finally, no, I was gonna say some teamwork from Leo in the sleaze, and it is reversed, but that is reversed too, double knees. Seb catches the drop kick with a stomp to the midsection. And now in comes Leo McKay. Leo's got him up off the ropes. Oh, went for a Hurricane Rana possibly. Oh man, Alexander slaps it out and sends Leo over the top rope, my God. 
Leo, this is not looking so good for Leo in the sleeves right now. Kick to the midsection. Forearm shot and goes for the Insigiri but misses and hits him with a big discus clothesline. Oh my gosh. Leo now in, is somewhat in control. He's, oh, big elbow across the face of Keith Alexander and a leg drop right across the throat. And now Leo back in this matchup, but just as fast, Alexander shuts it down. Alexander shuts it down into the turnbuckle. Oh, elbow to the face. Big clothesline into the corner. And now putting the boots up and over. Oh, right across the back of the head. Now Leo working over that arm. Oh my goodness. Leo again going after the hand. Going after the hand of Keith Alexander. Look at Seb. He's a little worn out out there. Kicked off by Alexander. And uh oh. Oh, Leo's going to use the ropes to get up. Oh, exploder into the corner. Exploder suplex into the corner. And, oh, he stays in the corner this time. But he quickly is out of it that time. Pushes Alexander away. But Keith Alexander quickly, oh, and he's busted open. But what with the reversal. Sending him into his own corner now. Here comes Leo and Seb. Look at that. Jeez. Seb's six foot or more. Six five, something like that. 370 pounds, and he just came off of that springboard like a champ. Quickly reversed by Keith Alexander. Uh-oh. German suplex. Keith hangs on. Dragon suplex hangs on again and locks him up. Locks him up for a straight jacket. German. Seb rolls out of the way. Big belly to belly. Oh my gosh. This is this match is pretty intense. It's pretty much Seb and Leo trying to survive the death drop. Reverse DDT. And out goes Alexander and in comes Kota Fish. Seb though with the reversal. And Kota right back at him with an arm drag. And a DDT. How many times are these guys gonna allow the birth to blast him with that DDT? Working the neck, cranking the neck of Australian sleaze. And now he's up to his feet. Quickly back down. Coda's got it locked in. Yes, but Le Seb was underneath the ropes. Good eye by the ref to catch that. Elbow to the lower back, though. Seb back up to his feet. This is the advantage the birth have, as I was mentioning. Up. Oh, man, the shatter machine. That could be it. Coda Fish is right there to stop Leo McKay, but Seb kicks out. Leo tossed over the top rope. My goodness. My goodness. Seb is all alone here in that ring. And they are taking advantage. They are taking advantage of it. And looks like Keith Alexander about to put this one away. He's got it locked up in a sleeper. Is Seb going to go to sleep? Leo McKay is stuck on the outside. And Seb Abbott has just tapped out. And the birth are your new gun slinger champions. Oh, my God. They were, they were pretty much ahead this whole match. And Leo in the sleaze really didn't have a chance, it looked like. So... After winning that, those uh, Gunslinger Championships, 
the birth has come in and taken them away. Leo and the Sleeves have got a lot to learn and a lot of team building. Your new Gunslinger champions, the birth. What a tag team match that was. But now we followed up with our second tag team match of the night. And if I didn't mention it before, this is a tornado tag team matchup. The Fallen Kingdom and the Sons of Carnage have done nothing but battle each other season after season here in SWF. So now we're about to see one once and for all these two teams go at it. And being a tornado tag, who the hell knows what's gonna happen. It's gonna get wild and crazy. And that's what we want. The more wild, the more crazy, the better. And nobody can get wild and crazy like the Sons of Carnage. These guys may not be the biggest couple of men on the roster, but they can fight. Jesse. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, James Gaines the third, the smaller of the two. The man can fight. He is a straight up. He will just straight up fight you. I mean, there's no way around that. No other way of saying that. But here come the Fallen Kingdom, Bruiser Brad and Malcolm Black, and Brad is cranked. Brad, of course. The biggest man in SWF, weight-wise, Jay Wolf, um, is the biggest man, the tallest man, I should say. But Bruiser Brad, my goodness, I don't know. I don't know if anybody has ever, other than Jay Wolf, really put put this man to the test. But we're about to find out. I think I think we are. I think we're about to see what's going to happen. All four of these men in the ring at the same time. Let's get it going. Ref rings that bell. Oh my goodness, Brad goes right after Jesse Newman. And James Gaines with a code breaker type move, a backbreaker to Malcolm Black. Look at... J all right, Bruiser Brad just dropped 500 pounds across the back of the neck of Jesse Newman. I'm going to do my best here to... Oh, nice move there from Malcolm Black. I'm going to do my best here to try to call this while it's not as crazy as our opening bout. There's still a lot happening. Rope break there. Jesse going after the legs of, Br of Bruiser Brad and now just chopping at the man and takes him down with a big clothesline. Malcolm Black... Turning James Gaines all the way around. Oh, stomping on his arm. Now, what's strange to me is that... Oh, nice hurricane run a reversal from Gaines. And a single leg Boston Crab from Brad. What What's interesting to me is that Jesse Newman and Malcolm Black are not going at each other. When they have been week after week after week. What a... I don't even know what that was from Malcolm Black. Back body drop by Brad. And a dodge from Black. It looked like uh, Gaines was going for a drop kick and now takes him down with a drop toe hold. And oh, big shot. Oh, and a reversal from Black. These guys going back and forth in a front drop kick. Over the top goes Jesse Newman. And Brad's going to follow him out. Oh, got stuck in the ropes a little bit. Big right hand to the face and a drop kick. Look at Brad, though, on the outside. He's got Newman up. Oh, gosh. Right across the apron. Oh, man. Slamming him head first into the apron. Uh-oh. Oh. Brad looked like to be going for a choke slam out there. Gaines misses the drop kick in the ring. Uh-oh. German into a bridge. No, and a kick out. Gaines back, or excuse me, Newman back in the ring. Side rush and leg sweep follow through. 
And here comes Bruiser Brad now. Oh, oh. Ref, you might not want to get in the way, brother. Into the corner goes Black. And, oh, man, what a kick-out reversal. Duck, ducking does mount. Uh, he's Bruiser Brad. Black in the corner again. And he's able to get out of these moves from Jesse Newman in a nice spinning forearm. Black's going to chase Newman or Gaines outside the ring. Newman and Brad are in the ring. Close line there. Elbow. Uh-oh. What has Malcolm Black got going on? It looked like he made it, wanted to send uh, Gaines over that barricade there. Brad comes to pretty quickly, and he's going to send Newman over the top rope. Look at, look at Brad. Look at Bruiser Brad from the middle rope. Oh, my goodness. And now Malcolm Black is up top. Elbow to the back of the head. Brad's got the pin on Newman. Oh, man, and a kick out. A reverse Samoan drop from Malcolm Black. He's going to get drug out to the center of the ring. Nice lion salt. Bruiser Brad with the big knees across the chest. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Brad knocks Gaines down, and Black tries to go for the pin, but Jesse breaks it up. Gaines is going to send Black into the turnbuckle as Jesse starts wailing away with those kicks. But Brad comes back with a big forearm. Uh-oh. It looks like Brad has got... Oh, okay. J James broke it up. Brad had him up in that bear hug. Gaines, oh, look to be going for a top rope move. And Malcolm Black hits that backflip move. Bruiser Brad has got, oh, man, almost tossed Jesse outside the ring. Into the corner now. And look at this. What is Gaines doing from one side of the ring to the other? DDT, nice move there from James Gaines. That might be what they need. And just as I say that, a Yakuza kick from Bruiser Brad as Malcolm Black takes it to Jesse Newman, or James Gaines, Jesse and the... I get these guys, I'm getting these guys mixed up. Jesse with a kick to the midsection and a big knee sends Bruiser Brad down to the mat. Gaines in the corner. Malcolm Black's gonna put him in the tree of row. The cutter, the cutter from Jesse Newman. Oh, no. Holy cow. Bruiser Brad able to get out as Malcolm Black looks like he's getting ready to go coast to coast. Bruiser Brad, though, right there over the top of everybody and drops the big kick right to the face of James Gaines while Jesse Newman has put Brad outside the ring. After the coast to coast, Malcolm Black gets down for the pin. Two, no, and oh, Bruiser Brad, uh, these guys, they haven't switched partners, but Bruiser Brad is really putting it to Newman on the outside. Is Gaines going to tap? It doesn't look like it. He's fighting out of it and pulls Malcolm Black down to his stomach there to the inside the ring. Big uppercut from Brad. Sit out face buster or, or chin buster, jawbreaker by Gaines. Brad hits a big sidewalk, uh, sidewalk slam out there. A single leg Boston Crab and Brad comes in and drop kick breaks it up. Breaks up that submission. Gaines in a bad way here. It's pretty much two on one but Newman slides into even the odds. Both Fallen Kingdom members go over the top and now, Sons of Carnage are, well, I was going to say working over Malcolm Black. And now they've finally traded partners. It sure looks like it. Black and, oh my gosh, Newman's been busted open. And Malcolm Black is going up top. 
I think we're about to see the end. Shooting star press and a tossing vertical suplex. Man, Brad just chunked Gaines as Black goes down for the pin after the shooting star. No, just a two count. And Newman is busted open. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. 500 pounds on the chest of James Gaines. That could be it. No. The little man is able to get out of it as Malcolm Black gets his legs taken out from under him. Oh, nice reversal into a pin by Gaines. DDT by Newman. Brad was able to get out of the pin. Uh-oh. Look at this. Black able to get out of whatever move that Newman was trying to put onto him. Gaines, I don't know what he was thinking, trying to go up against Bruiser Brad right there. But Brad's going to send the much smaller man over the top rope. And, uh-oh, into a crow, oh, into the rings of Saturn. Into the rings of Saturn is Jesse Newman going to tap. And he does. He taps out, and the Fallen Kingdom have gotten the victory as James Gaines gets one last move in on Bruiser Brad. Malcolm Black gets Jesse Newman to tap out. And the ghost of Bruiser Brad is in the ring. I, get, I don't... Fallen Kingdom get the victory over their rivals the Sons of Carnage. Where does that put the Fallen Kingdom for the tag titles? The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Southern Championship. Well, folks, the time has come. It is the Lone Star Championship matchup between SDC, the hero of wrestling he likes to call himself, versus our Lone Star champion, Duke Zenda. Now, in the past few weeks, SDC and Duke Zenda have been at each other. Duke and the Savage John Robb were supposed to face off against each other a few weeks ago. And after SDC had gotten the victory over Brett Storm, he came out later in the evening and attacked Duke Zenda before the match even started. The following week, SDC and Duke Zenda faced off in a one-on-one -on -one matchup where SDC ended up getting that victory that put him pretty much on track for the Lone Star Championship. And then last week, Duke Zenda faced off against Mason Foster and got himself counted out as to not, as he says, injure himself before his big matchup. So SDC and Duke Zenda, Duke's got a lot on his plate right now. Duke has got revenge. He has got urgency for sure. And he definitely has the will. He's got to keep, he wants to keep that Lone Star Championship. And to do that, he's got to go through this man right here. So, what is Duke's strategy here? SDC seems to have been having the upper hand throughout the last couple of weeks. So, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what Duke Zenda's game plan is. Basically, keep the title. That's obvious. But with SDC being on top of this whole situation for the last couple of weeks, I don't know what Duke's got in store for him. I will tell you this. I've just found this out. With the victory over Alex Corzo, Brett Storm is the number one contender for the Lone Star Championship. I have just heard that from the championship committee. Apparently, he has proven 
to the championship committee where that he belongs. He is your new number one contender. What does that mean for him after this matchup? My goodness. My guy, I, I can't. SWF is a minefield right now. And I can't wait to see what, what plays out. Duke Zenda, your Lone Star champion, folks. Our co-main event of the evening. The boos. My goodness. The boos are pouring in. For the money man, Duke Zenda. SDC is fired up. He came into SWF um, in a tag team with Dino D before breaking out onto his own. He is one half of Fight and Flight with Vice as they were put together um, during the Gunslinger Championship Tournament. Let's take it to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Weighing in at 224 pounds, SDC Hero. <laughs> Introducing the champion from Houston, Texas. Weighing in at 250 pounds, he is the Southern Champion, Duke Zinda. Here we go. Duke hands over the Lone Star Championship to the referee. He gives SDC a look at it. He says, let's do this. The Lone Star Championship on the line. SDC versus Duke Zenda. The ref checks and the bell rings. And they hook up center of the ring and Duke with... Big forearms, as I said, Duke, oh, what a knee. Uh-oh, my goodness, SDC coming out of the gate. Big clothesline, not knocking down Duke Zenda, though. Standing his ground. SDC is lethal with those knees. We've seen the knees put many people away. Duke down to one knee. And again, SDC with the kicks. Puts the money man down to one knee again. And this time, Duke saw it coming. Duke's going to have to do quite a bit to hang on to the championship in this matchup. As the quickness and the speed of SDC is unmatched. And that's not something Duke, I believe, has uh, had to deal with lately or at all here in SWF. Uh, Duke did go up against Leo McKay, um, but Leo's more of a bruiser and a fighter. Duke went up against Ryan Riley. Oh, going for the pin here. One, no, just a one count, if that. Ryan Riley, not um, not the fastest guy on the roster. Oh, reversal from SDC, and he drops Duke across his back and, and head. Now, Duke Zenda defeated SDC for the opportunity to fight Siler Jordan for the Lone Star Championship. So SDC has got somewhat of an ax to grind with our champion. He's got him up. Falcon Arrow. Falcon Arrow. We've seen that so many times from SDC. Duke rolls out of the way. Big DDT. My goodness. And the pin. Just a one count. The, that was a quick DDT. SDC with an arm breaker, though. And he's going to send the champ over the top rope. He hangs on, though. Oh, my goodness. Duke looked to have the upper hand there. And SDC delivers an insecurity and puts Duke in the sawdust. Backbreaker into a side rush and leg sweep from the hero of wrestling. Ref at the count of three. Reversal from Duke. Big forearm. Uh-oh. Knee to the face. 
And now a kick to the leg of SDC. As I said, SDC is wicked with those knees. And at any moment, you could get blasted with one very quickly. Tossing Duke up and back down hard onto the mat. Oh, oh! And then into this dragon sleeper, center of the ring, the champ's got nowhere to go. Is he gonna tap or is he gonna fight out of this thing? Duke Zenda, oh, it looks like SDC just let go. I have to say, I think Duke's in a bad way here. Shoulder breaker onto the mat and Duke's gonna take this opportunity to roll outside the ropes here. Maybe catch his breath a little bit. And a shot sends him down to the outside. Duke is exhausted already. SDC really putting the screws to Duke. Oh my goodness, he goes for the clothesline and SDC plants his head right onto the apron. Duke has got SDC up, nope. Drops him down again onto the back of his head. Holy Toledo. Two, and Duke kicks out at two. Man, oh man. SDC is throwing everything at Duke Zenda. And a, there's a knee to the face and Duke's been busted open. Duke's been busted open and the fans are behind SDC here. Big running knee. By God, that could be it. One, two, three it is. SDC has dethroned the money man. Duke Zenda with a running knee. And your new Lone Star Champion is SDC. My goodness, Duke sits on the edge of the ring, disappointed, covered in blood, and disappointed in himself. an extreme rules match and it's for the middleweight championship our main event of the evening ladies and gentlemen the maverick championship extreme rules knockout match seb abbott as you can clearly see from earlier this evening no longer the gunslinger Gunslinger champion, excuse me, as those tag titles were picked up by the birth. So we will not have our first ever double champion here in SWF. You got to think that Seb Abbott is a little, what's the word, tired, beat up, exhausted, worn out. I mean, he, he went through hell in that match with the birth and and as I said then Leo McKay and Seb Abbott they've got some work to do as a team to continue uh, uh, their their rise up but the birth have been a team for a long time and it showed here tonight so far we have had two title changes the gunslinger championships go to the birth the Lone Star Championship goes to SDC Will we see Seb Abbott regain the Maverick Championship from Jay Wolf and in turn have the opportunity at any time to go to the Lone Star Championship? I actually might split this out before the next show where Jay Wolf would be able to keep that championship contract briefcase if he loses here tonight, if he loses here tonight, I will. Uh, I may contact Wolf and see which one he may want to uh, hang on to, whether it's the Maverick Championship or the Lone Star Championship contract, just to uh, just to keep things spicy here in SWF. Give some people the opportunities they may not otherwise have. Jay Wolf is your Maverick Champion. He won that title from Seb Abbott at Gold Rush. And these two guys have kind of been at each other since. 
as Seb's been trying to get it back. But will he? Will he get it back here tonight? Who knows? We're about to find out in a what I can only assume would be a brutal matchup. Let's get down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Melbourne, Australia, weighing in at 318 pounds, Sebastian Abbott. Introducing the champion from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 380 pounds, he is the middleweight champion, Jay the Savage Wolf. That thing looks like a child's toy in the hands of Jay Wolf. But a championship nonetheless. As he hands it over. Look how look how big he is. Seb's got a tall order, literally and figuratively, in front of him for this. Mavericks championship. This an extreme rules knockout match. Somebody's going down for the count tonight. Who's it gonna be? Seb comes out hard with a big clothesline to Jay Wolf. After the the match he had earlier this evening, I don't blame him one bit. He is fired up and probably a little pissed off. Jay Wolf with a back body drop, though. And immediately, Seb rolls outside the ring. Probably feeling the effects from his previous matchup. Jay Wolf's head bouncing off the hardest part of the ring right there. And a headbutt. Clearly, it didn't bother him. A headbutt to Sebastian Abbott. Wolf is under the ring now. What is he pulling out? A table. Oh, my gosh. He blasts Seb Abbott with the table. Seb with the reversal, though. Oh, my God. He just bent Jay Wolf right over the apron there. Holy cow. So far, the table's the only thing been brought in in a big body splash. And a kick to the face, though. Oh, my goodness. Hanging Seb Abbott out to dry as Seb, again, goes for a huge clothesline. Nice reversal there by Seb in a forearm. Sends Jay Wolf down. I'm interested to see what in, what's going to happen. I mean, Wolf brought the table out. And over the top rope goes Jay. If history is repeating itself from what we've seen already tonight, the more dominant superstar right off the bat seems to have gotten the victory here. Are we going to see that in our main event? Big clothesline there from Jay Wolf. Wolf has got Abbott up and over the apron. He put me down on the apron. I'm going to put you down. Wolf has got Seb up again. This time going to the steel. Steps face first. Face first goes Australian sleaze. And now, there, remember, there's no count outs. No pins, no submissions. You have to knock your opponent out to win this matchup. What a move there by Jay Wolf. Look at Jay. Oh, Big power slam. Holy cow. Oh, he goes for a, a gorilla press slam, but Seb gets out of it, and we've seen the low blow before. We've seen the low blow put men away before. And now he has got a chair. This could be the difference maker. The person who ends up using the most weapons or using them most effectively may get the victory here and a kick to the midsection and a forearm so Seb put the chair down and now goes back to it looks like he's going to need it right across the legs no Wolf gets out of it 
Grabs the chair away from Seb Abbott. Oh no, we're about to see a full moon out here in the sawdust, dear God. Good God Almighty. But since there are no pins and no submissions, oh, Seb's, Seb's holding his head. That can't be a good sign. Look at this. Seb lining Jay Wolf up. Goes for the clothesline from Hill, and Jay bounces off the announce table. Dear God. What are these two guys going to have to do to each other to knock each other out? That's what I want to know. And Seb taunting to the crowd, seeming like he's got this thing under control. But a nice MMA-style takedown from Jay Wolf. He's got Seb up now. Nope, delivers a shoulder block, puts Jay Wolf down to the mat. Picks him right up. Nice fireman carry takedown. And Seb going outside the ring now. Lifting up that Southern Pride, or excuse me, Southern Stampede ring apron. And he has got, he has got a ladder, folks. Jay Wolf taking the opportunity to taunt the crowd. And Seb takes him down with the ladder. And a, begins to abuse him with it. One sh more shot to the chest before dumping it right on top of him. So oh my God. Seb smooth took the head off of Jay Wolf. And unfortunately, there are no pins and are no count outs. So they are really going to have to put the screws to each other here tonight. Almost out of the ring. Dear Lord. Nice belly-to-back takedown. And Seb is cranked. You can only imagine he's so fired up after his matchup earlier tonight. Jay Wolf with the takedown. And now he has got the ladder. Oh, my. Oh, no. Jay, Seb gets out of the way. Not from that one. He gets blasted right in the face with that steel ladder. And again, a second time. And Jay might be having a little bit of issue getting to Seb when he's in that corner before dropping the ladder on top of him. Jay Wolf taking a bit of a break. Because, you, I mean, I don't know what they're going to have to do to each other, but the deadlift power slam, center of the ring, and that's it. That's it. Seb's Ab Seb Abbott's head bouncing off the, the ring. Right off the center of the canvas. And Jay Wolf retains the Maverick Championship. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a hell of a pay-per-view. We've got two new champions. We'll see you next time on Shootout.